Today in our 2009 Cadillac Escalade, we're going to be showing you how to install the Tecancha Voyager. This is a proportional electronic brake controller, good for up to four axles. Part number on it is 39510. The Voyager is a nice, simple, easy to use brake controller. Basically what we've got is power settings on the right side of the controller. So for smaller trailers or when our trailers are unloaded, we'll turn that sensitivity down to where we just barely have any change at all in the color of our light. As our trailer gets heavier, we have a need for extra braking power. We just rotate that dial away from us and that'll increase it, as you can see. So we can fine tune this brake controller for whatever our trailer situation is. Here on the left side of the controller, we've got our level setting. We can set that at whatever level we want it to be at. And then when we hit the brakes, the sensor inside is gonna tell us how much needs to be applied back to the trailer. So in an aggressive braking situation or an emergency braking situation, it's gonna send all the power back there. In stop and go situations where we're just in traffic and we just need light braking power, this is gonna do that for you as well. This is gonna prevent any kind of overheating of our braking system. Straight up and down is gonna give us just a normal setting. If we rotate it towards us, we'll have a delayed setting. If more aggressive braking is needed or a quicker, more immediate response is needed, we can set that away from us. So once we have our initial setting done here on the side, we can start testing it out. If our wheels on our trailer are locking up, well then we need to back that off a little bit. If we hit our brakes and we feel the trailer kind of pushing us a little bit, well then we can fine tune that up a little bit to accommodate for that, turn it into a little bit more of an aggressive system so it'll do its job properly. The nice thing about it being a proportional system is that we can go all the way up to 70 degrees or all the way down to negative 20 degrees as long as we keep it right in line with our direction of travel and we won't have any issues. Now as we're traveling down the road, the green LED is going to act as a trailer monitor. It's going to make sure our, we have a good connection and there aren't any issues. As we apply our brakes, it's going to move into a dim orange and on up to a dark red just depending on how much power is being applied to the rear. Now we need to begin our installation by finding our factory wiring that's going to exist underneath the dashboard. Now here we've got our onboard diagnostic port. We're going to go back from that about four inches, just about to the very front of our parking brake here. There's going to be a wiring harness that runs right behind this little tab. There's a piece of tape that's holding it on, and it's got this piece of white paper on it that indicates what needs to be connected where. So we want to be careful and just lightly trim that tape and then pull down our harness. Here you can see we've got a red with black, dark blue, a white, and then a light blue with white. Let's pull off our tag here as well. You'll see on here it's going to tell us what we need to connect where. We need to look at our brake controller instructions. It's also going to have instructions for what wire goes to what. We'll start with our ground here. I'll strip this off. Use one of the smaller butt connectors provided with our brake controller. Just go through and we'll add our connectors to each one of our wires here. Maybe a little bit more. The two small wires get the blue butt connectors. The two larger ones are going to get the yellow. Now we'll bring in the pigtail that's going to come with the brake controller and we'll use the diagram that we've got here or we'll use the list that we've got here and we're going to match that up to the list that's in our instructions and start hooking up our wires. Our white wire is going to go to the white wire. Now our black wire is going to be our battery wire that goes to the red and black. Now our red wire is going to go to our stop light wire, which is going to be the light blue and white. And then finally, 
our darker blue wire, that's going to be connected to the darker blue wire from our pigtail. Alright, now let's take a second just to kind of tape this all up, make it look a little bit nicer. Alright, now with that wrapped up, that'll give us a nice clean wiring look so we won't have four separate wires kind of hanging out. We're just going to set that aside and let's get our brake controller put in. Now we can mount our brake controller. Um, we can pick really any spot here on or under the dash that we like. I like to use this small screw that's right here. There's already a hole there. It goes into a metal bracket. It's going to give us a lot of support. You can mount up here on the dash if you want as long as you stay in our, our angle limitations on it. The one area I would avoid would be over here on this left side. Uh, you might bump your knee when you're getting in and out of the car. Uh, just anywhere over like on this side should be fine or right down here where we're going to go. Now we can slide our bracket in right behind there. Place in our screw and just tighten it down. It's not a bad idea to put one of the self-tapping screws in. It's going to be provided just for a little side-to-side -side support. As you can see there, now it won't move or turn. It's a great mounting location. Now we'll place our pigtail into the wiring coming off the back of the controller. Want to make sure that clicks in, has a good connection. Now you can see we've got two holes on each side of the brake controller here. We can put those in the lower set that we've got here. The lower set will give us some angle adjustability, or if we've got room, we'll go into that upper set, which I think in this application shouldn't be an issue. We'll use the provided short self-tapping screws to go right into the side there. Now that we've got all four of them started, we'll go ahead and tighten these down. Now let's gather up whatever extra pigtail we've got here. Just like that. And we'll secure that off right to that vent. All right, nice and clean, but readily available if we need to get to it. Now let's head under the hood and hook up our wire. Now let's pull the cover off of our fuse block here. And we'll see two studs sticking up here, one here and one here. Now we need to connect one of our wires that's hanging out right down here. And you can see it just underneath that wiring cluster there, that red one with the black stripe. We'll pull that one up here as well. Now the wire that we've got down here on that cluster, it's going to go to the smaller stud. The wire that's over here on this main harness is going to go to the larger stud. We will need a couple of nuts to help hold these on. To access them, we'll just pull out on the small tab and up on the gray lever. We'll bring our wires in, place our nuts on, and the other one we're hooking up, that's going to be power back to the trailer connector. But since we're here, we might as well get them both taken care of. Now we can put our cover back on after we kind of bend those down. Now let's plug in our trailer and test the system. As you can see, our green lights came on, indicating that our system's connected properly. Now with everything working the way it should, that's gonna to complete today's installation of the Takancha Voyager, part number 39510 on our 2009 Cadillac Escalade.